Hey guys, we're hanging out at the beautiful McKinney Falls, just south of Austin, Texas. One of my favorite places, used to live here, but we didn't have this kind of e-bike back then. This is the brand new step-through Rad Rover. And we've got the original Rad Rover over here, high step in black. These both come in black and white. This is kind of a matte finish. So it looks pretty cool, but it does show smudges just a little bit. That's one of the things I was noticing about it. These two bikes share a lot in common, but I noticed that the, the steering tube up here, a little bit longer on the step through versus the high step, they're using some spacers. So the geometry is actually fairly similar. Similar reach, very low standover height, relatively low minimum saddle height, but you'll notice that they've got this riser here for the rear light, and that's so it can clear the fender. So if you're perfectly in line with the bike, it just peaks out, and most time it's gonna be like a car, maybe looking from the side or from the rear. Really like the headlight upgrade too. They've got this heat fin. It's actually aluminum alloy up there to dissipate heat because they've got a light ring and a really focused lens. 80 lumens on this thing. Very cool to see Rad doing all these custom like partnerships. You can actually see their logos right here. Check out these tires. These are the Juggernauts from Kenda, but they're Rad branded. They have puncture protective casing and a reflective sidewall stripe. 12 gauge spokes, front and rear, extra sturdy, and they're black. They match the rims, they match the hubs. It's just a really nice setup. They've been refining these bikes for years now. And for me, a bike like this is fun, it's comfortable, and it is capable. You can go off road and take it over some bumps and stuff, and you're gonna feel stable. You're not gonna get quite as much like jitter going on. It's really neat to see a custom fat tire specific fork here. This is a sprung fork. It does have this like progressive lockout. So if you're not on bumpy terrain and you don't want that like, you know, kind of up and down sag feeling, you can lock it out. For me personally, I like the comfort, so I leave it unlocked. And then over here we have preload adjust, so you can preload that spring. So if you're someone who's a little heavier, you're not gonna use up a lot of that uh, that distance here, 100 millimeters of travel, just getting on the bike. So you preload, nice to see those extra adjustments. Quick release on the front wheel there not on the rear. They're using a 12 millimeter axle. And the reason they have to do that and use standard nuts is because it's got a motor connected to it. So they really wanna tighten that down, make sure everything's really stable and secure. 750 watts, 80 newton meters of torque on that thing. Very impressive. It's rad branded as well. I think it's a Bafong motor though, just so you know. This is a planetary geared motor. So that means when you coast, there's no friction, there's no drag, and it's able to be a little bit smaller, more compact, which is nice. It sort of hides behind this fairly large 180 millimeter disc brake rotor, mechanical disc brakes here. That's one of the few trade-offs with the Rad bikes. So before I get to that, I wanna point out that they are using a steel torque arm right here, and that helps to brace the motor. You can imagine all that power enough to like spin this wheel and give you throttle activation and climb. It actually does pretty well, but that's a lot of force. And this is an aluminum alloy frame. So they use these little torque arms, which is really nice to see. And then there's a bunch of threaded eyelets here. So you could add a rear rack, even more right here. There, there's a lot of options actually for accessories and stuff I'm gonna get to in a second, but it does come with fenders now, which is really cool. That's gonna keep you extra dry. They seem pretty well built. They aren't the adjustable ones that can kind of go out of true. You know, they, they might add a little bit of noise, but being plastic, they're not gonna get scratched up and rust the way that steel fenders might. And they also don't weigh as much. So this bike right here only comes in one frame size, 71.4 pounds, which is kind of a lot for an electric bike, really any bike, but that's partially because it is using such a powerful motor and they had to reinforce the frame here. It's got a fairly high capacity battery pack. I wanna call out how they reinforce the frame. So you can see this big gusset right here, extra plating, and that's gonna keep it from flexing when you ride. Another one right here, this is almost like a mini top tube. Normally a top tube's way up here, and they just, they kinda of surround the battery to protect it, but it also gives the frame additional strength. So I mentioned the battery earlier. This is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour, 672 watt hour capacity. It's good to have that that extra juice when you're using the throttle a lot. And that's one of the things I do like about these bikes. These are class two, they can go up to 20 miles per hour. You can use that throttle even in zero assist level. So you can scoot around without pedaling if you need to take a break or uh, maybe you're just kind of working into it and you wanna lower that saddle. You're not getting full leg extension. It's nice to have the twist throttle as an option. And then of course it has pedal assist. So you can see there's this high resolution 12 magnet disc right in there. And then there's a reader you can see on the other side. So this is, is really nice. It's gonna start and stop fairly quickly. It's not quite as dynamic as like a torque sensor or a multi-sensor, but 
On the other hand, you have to work a little bit more with those kinds of sensors. And given that this has a throttle, you can take off and then you can just start pedaling smoothly, not overexerting yourself, and then the motor will kick in based on pedaling. So that's nice. 170 millimeter crank arms, Welgo platform pedals. I really like these. They've got those nice tread pattern, fairly grippy. This is a it's kind of a semi off-road bike. So having higher end equipment, not a plastic pedal that's gonna get cracked and stuff, that's nice to see. Got a neoprene slap guard back here and this nice nickel plated freewheel in the back. This is DNP. That's a really nice spread on this. A lot of times these are like 14 to 28. So what they've done here with that larger sprocket, you can see it here, the really big one, this is, this is going to make it easier to start and to climb. Again, this is a heavy bike, so it's nice that they went with this. A lot of times they have to upgrade to like a cassette. So having a freewheel with that kind of range is nice. Seven speeds, they're using Shimano Acera versus Turney, something that would be a little more entry level. That means it's a lighter weight derailleur. It might hold up better over time. It does have a barrel adjuster, so as you get some, some cable stretch over time, um, or as things just settle, you can adjust this by hand. You don't need extra tools and stuff. And they've got this nice steel derailleur guard, which is wonderful to see especially because they do ship these bikes and you know if the bike ever tipped over or if it gets kicked or something in the garage it's nice to have the sensitive bits extra protected one of the other really cool things rad is doing now is they've got this rad mobile service where they deliver the bike if you buy it in one of these major cities it's starting out in austin seattle vancouver and sacramento and i think that's pretty cool because you know as, as nice as these new boxes are and everything and they're pretty wide there's still a lot of kind of messing around. If you don't have a bike rack and you want to get this thing set up right, it's so cool that they're doing this. It's $149. Having this kind of service at your disposal really sets them apart from some of the other like online direct uh, e-bike brands. They also do warranty service with this too. So it's not just your first purchase. I think that's awesome. Here is the shifter, kind of a paddle shifter or a thumb shifter design. Fairly large. I, I kind of like the trigger shifters, but a lot of times they don't fit when you have a twist throttle like this because there's an extra housing going on. So I understand why they do this. This is kind of what they use on all the bikes. You've got these really clear readouts for numeric, like what gear you're in. And it works really well if you have like gloves on. So maybe it's a cold day and you're riding this in the snow or something or an early morning at the beach. These fat tires really are capable. I've tested them in New Mexico on sandy beaches. That's not the case here, but sometimes in the woods, you know, if it gets soft and low, me or there's just a little section or maybe you're crossing a river or something it's nice to have that extra width and then a little bit of float so there is a decent uh, psi range on these these are 26 by 4 inches traditional fat tires and this is one of the most popular bikes from rad power bikes again starting out with the high step that we see over here i mentioned the racks earlier you can see this one's got a, a rear rack as well as that front tray and then a basket option they have an even larger basket they have panniers that fit over the rack you can see those right here these are highly water resistant and then they have another insulated bag so there's just a lot on offer here check out that rear rack i really like that it, it looks nice especially in orange kind of pops and then they've relocated that light pretty well protected right there threaded eyelets on top we've also got the yet compatible window so they have a yep child seat this would totally be a good good setup if you have a kid or something and you want to be a, like kind of a one bike family where maybe you're trading off between spouses or friends or something like that you can raise and lower the seat 27.2 millimeter seat post diameter which is pretty standard okay and they do sell i think it's the sun tour ncx suspension seat post as an aftermarket accessory so when you pair that up with the front suspension fork it actually feels pretty comfortable you know all, all around it's a capable bike you got that headlight pointing wherever you're steering that's nice you got the safety whole lot of extra wires up here some of that is because of the light but it's also because there are motor inhibitors built into both brake levers. Remember I mentioned mechanical brake levers, a little bit more effort required to activate these, especially the rear because it has to run so far along the frame, but it keeps them a little bit more affordable. They're a little bit easier to adjust aftermarket yourself. You can just come down here with the toolkit that they give you and just loosen this and kind of pull the cable and adjust it. Again, Rad does have, in some cities, their like mobile delivery service that could help you out and a lot of bike shops. I mean, this is pretty standard equipment. So a lot of it's a little bit more, you know, it's, it's a little more basic. That's why it's a lighter weight bike. And they're trying to keep that $14.99 price point, which I think they're doing a good job, especially with those lights integrated. A lot of e-bikes don't have integrated lights. They're aftermarket kind of battery operated or the ones where you have to, you know, kind of clamp it onto the handlebars and then take it off every time you park. So I guess what I was trying to say is it's nice that both of these brake levers override 
the motor systems because with a throttle, with a cadence sensor like this, you don't want to feel out of control with this much power and with a heavier bike. So it feels like they're doing a great job, including all those extra accessories and stuff. And you can see they're all quick disconnects, even a threaded one here with a little rubber gasket. So it's, a, it's going to be highly water resistant, which is awesome. Another area that I feel like they've done a good job with is this chain guide. And for me, especially, I'm, you know, I'm out here with pants this morning and I don't want those pants to touch that chain, especially if it's been lubed and maybe it's got some dirt and grime on it. So this is gonna protect my pant leg a little bit. And it's also gonna keep that chain from jumping off, especially if I'm bumpy terrain. So that's a really nice upgrade metal. So it's not gonna crack. It acts as like a bash guard here. If you run into a log or something, pretty high end stuff where you want it, or at least thoughtful stuff. This is, this is like, extra thought that goes into these bikes. I really feel like they're they're paying attention to all the details. There are some visual compromises. You can see the controller box right here, but it is fully potted. It's a nicer controller that provides a little bit more amperage flow. So you're gonna get a zippier feel on this bike. Check out this plush saddle, fairly comfortable. It's got a handle. A lot of times you're kind of picking the bike up and moving it around and that gives you a way to do that uh, pretty easily. I also appreciate the kickstand that they've chosen. So it's an adjustable length stand and they position it pretty far back on the bike, which is great if you have the rack loaded and it stays clear of that left crank arm. So I think that's a, a pretty good overview. I just wanna also show you guys that they have a step through rad mini. So if you're someone who's debating, you know, hey, I want the lower entry point on a bike. Well, this is another option for you. And these smaller tires here, you know, these are 20 inch versus 26. They have a higher attack angle, which means they kind of run into things and fall into bumps and um, different terrain more than spanning it. See how that has a lower attack angle. So that's one of the reasons you might want to upgrade uh, to the Rad Rover step through, but it's nice to see this. And again, it's a little even more approachable, a lower minimum saddle point and it keeps the gear and stuff lower, but maybe there's not as much room for those big bags to hang down on the sides. So that's kind of what I think about. And, and you know, of course the foldability of this is nice if you don't have a whole lot of space or if you're an RVer or someone who just wants to, to pack this up in the back of your SUV. And then of course, here is the original Rad Rover, looking really good. You'll notice that with the black, all the wires and stuff really blend in and they're just a lot more hidden. They are fairly internally routed, but they do protrude a little bit here at the bottom bracket. Again, that's why it's nice to see uh, this just chain guard, this double-sided guide keeps the chain on track, but also just prevents those wires from taking any contact as you cruise along. So I think that's about it. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the display system over here. So we got the battery charged and mounted. I love that the battery is interchangeable, by the way, between all these, because you could get a couple of rad bikes and then swap the batteries, or someone's going on a big adventure, you can toss it in your backpack and go a little bit further. Um, so anyway, battery is charged and mounted, locked to the frame. So, you know, we got a little four LED charge level indicator right there, it's nice kind of, you know, semi-aerodynamic shape. It, it slides on like this, it mounts and then slides down. And depending on which frame we're talking about, like if it's the Rad Minis, you might have to raise the seat and turn it or, or take it off. So getting the battery on and off on some models is a little easier like the Rad Rover on others, takes a little bit more time. Um, here's the charging port on the right hand side. It's got a little rubber cover that's fairly easy to use. Sometimes those aren't so easy to use on other bikes. They don't seat very well. Oh yeah, you know, 40 volt, 14 amp hour, 672 watt hours. These weigh about, you know, 7.6, 7.7 pounds. They do have two fuses right there, which is nice. Uh, I don't have an IP rating, ingress protection rating, but they say they're highly water resistant, uh, just like the motor and the display. So they say you can ride these bikes around in rain and in wet conditions, you're, you're definitely not supposed to submerge them or anything, but uh, it's nice that they warranty them for that one year comprehensive and that the battery pack replacements are a little more affordable because the controller unit is separate. And then another unique quality about these batteries is that the locking mechanism has, has three different slots. So right now you could slide it onto the bike because that pin is not protruding. And then once it's on, you can kind of push and turn and it'll lock to the frame and you can remove the key. And in this mode, it's it's off. So no one can tamper with your display, which is kind of cool. No one's gonna be able to use the throttle or anything. And then you take it to that next step, right? Still locked. And now take the key out, the bike will work. So it's really cool for people who don't wanna take this off their bike, but don't want people tampering, you kind of lock it and turn the bike off. I think that's, that's really nice. And 
Uh, there are a lot of other bikes that don't do that, so good job, Brad. And having a removable battery for all their bikes is really a, a nice feature because it means you could commute with the bike and park the bike outside, bring the battery inside where there's a charging port. Also, you want to avoid extreme heat because these lithium ion cells, while they are higher quality, I think they're Samsung cells, the heat just degrades them and you won't get as many full charge cycles. And then we've got this little button pad up here. We hold the mode button, comes to life pretty quickly. I believe this is a King meter display, but again, rad branded. These guys have been doing a good job for quite a while. I've reviewed their bikes for like four or five years now. And uh, every year they just, they tighten things up even more. So five ticks on the battery indicator, which is roughly 20% steps. It'd be nice if there were like 10 ticks, so it'd be 10% or even a percentage, but you know, it gets the job done. We got our odometer up here, current speed, and then pedal assist level it starts out in one, but we could take that down to zero. And then it would just pedal like a heavy bicycle, but that throttle still works, so that's kind of nice. If we press the mode button here, it cycles from the odometer to the trip distance, and if we hold the up button, it cycles from current speed to average speed, and then max speed. So there's really a lot of different options here. To get the headlights to go, you hold up and mode simultaneously. And then this display actually, it's really nice. It's backlit and there are three steps. This is that headlight. You can see that circle, really visible. On their older lights, you couldn't see them as much from the side. So I feel like that's a big upgrade for these new ones. And then there's that, that rear light. There's a button underneath. And if you press that button, it turns to flashing mode, which is really nice. It's gonna keep you extra visible. And then if you pull those brake levers, in addition to having motor inhibitors, there's also like a bright mode on that rear light. So just very thoughtfully done. And metal bracket, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. They, they spend a little bit of extra energy and really tighten things up around safety, especially, but also just functionality. It's nice to see, really nice to see that. If we hold the down arrow for a second, we get walk mode. There we go. And you do have to be in one of the five levels of assist for that to work. If you're in zero, it's not gonna work. So keep that in mind and there we go. You can see the branding on the motor right there. It's pretty nice. And if we hold the up and down arrows simultaneously, get into some secrets. So here's the kind of the menu system and change some settings. Wheel size, 26 inches, that's correct. And then if I press the mode button, we get onto 32 kilometers per hour, but we can actually lower that all the way down to 12. So you can lower the top speed for people who might feel uncomfortable at the higher speeds. I think that's kind of a nice feature. And then the next thing is brightness. So backlight brightness, I had it up at three. And then miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And that's kind of it. When you want to get out, you hold the mode button for a couple seconds. There we go. And this display is adjustable angle. So if you're getting glare, you can you can fix that. It's not removable. So I like that it's center mounted because if you're at a bike rack, you don't want this thing to get scratched. It is just plastic. And down here we have a full size USB type A charging port. So you can plug your phone in. Maybe you get a mount. They do sell that as an option as well, like a little phone mount. So you could use GPS or maybe play some music or something like that while you're riding. It's, it's a pretty nice setup. I want to call out ergonomically see how short that stem is and it's actually a riser stem so it positions the bar up higher and then we have these mid-rise handlebars so you can swivel those backwards like this and that's going to shorten your reach and just having them up like this this is a more upright ride whereas a lot of mountain bikes traditionally they have this longer stem and flat bars wide flat bars and that's to give you a lot of steering control which is really nice if you're a technical rider or you're going really fast but for more of a neighborhood cruiser occasional trail bike which is what I think this is really designed for this is perfect it's a lot more comfortable works well with these stitched faux leather ergonomic grips they tie into the saddle it's just a good setup you know again i've, I've reviewed this bike a bunch of times so each year i just look for what the big differences are and and I, I just feel like it's so nice that they've got these racks that are interchangeable across all their bikes that they've got all the right mounting points that they got the integrated lights nice fenders nice tires that are puncture resistant i mean that's all the stuff you want and again, the price really hasn't changed for quite a while. $14.99, I consider that to be pretty affordable. Same price point for a lot of their other bikes. And by the way, here's a charger, 1.1 pounds. 
super lightweight, two amps, so it might take you six hours to charge the thing if it's completely empty. This is a fairly high capacity battery by comparison to some of the standard 500 watt hour packs, you know, 672. Oh, I should say 7.7 .7 pounds for that battery, 8.7 pounds for that motor. So a lot of the weight, they're trying to keep it low and center. It's still a little bit rear heavy on this bike, but it's not too bad. The forks actually weigh a lot, so they kind of kind of balances things out. I think that's about it, you guys. I'm gonna hop on this thing and give you some ride footage. Okay, guys, I'm starting off in the lowest level of assist, and I've been really impressed because it's not overwhelming. Like, especially with Cadence sensors, they're some of the older designs, it really felt like, you know, and it was like, all oh, go. Now it, it eases in and it's a lot more subtle, which is perfect. Sometimes you just wanna cruise along. Same thing with being able to lower that top speed. It's nice to have a bike that feels like it's not out of control. So I'm gonna start off pedal assist level one. Now I'm going up to two, three, four, and five. Oh boy. Really nice to have those big stable tires on a gravelly section of trail like that. We were we were climbing and you know a lot of times I'm filming with one hand, so it's it's nice to have a bike that feels so stable. Even the motor, it's starting off a lot smoother. Feels fairly smooth and stable in terms of the, the no hand test. A lot of times I'm wondering on these low step frames if they're you know if there's a lot of frame flex but i think they've really they've really reinforced this so it feels solid which is no small feat given how big and heavy those tires are I'm taking it down to assist level three I'm gonna head out on that dirt trail from here you should be able to see that suspension going up and down a little bit as we ride along the trail and i'm also going to shake the frame just to try to demonstrate any frame flex Yeah, it's feeling really solid. I could hear a little bit of chain bounce going on, but I'm in one of the higher gears, so, you know, the chain is a little bit longer here. I'm gonna hit the, the gears here. <laughs> Now that we're in the shady section, you can really see that headlight pop. I mean, it's it's fairly bright. And with that focus beam, in the past, it felt like kind of a be seen headlight. Now it actually feels like the ring helps you be seen, but the other one, it's fairly focused and it gives you a it gives you enough visibility to spot the trail. There's the rear light, which, you know, it's it's decent. It's only one LED, but when you pull that that brake lever, it's nice that it goes bright. Okay, guys, from here you can see that. 42 tooth steel chain ring and it's sandwiched by these aluminum alloy guides or guards so it's going to keep the chain from bouncing off it's going to protect my pants uh, just a really nice setup down here it's also a kind of a bash guard if you encounter a big log or a rock or something that way you won't mess your chain up i love that there's a slap guard it's going to keep that frame looking good over time uh, white frames you know there's aluminum alloy underneath this so they don't show chips as much but they would show kind of the black grease and other things that could get on there so it's still a really nice thing to have and then back here we have shimano acera that's a great derailleur it's kind of a, a value price point but it's not the lowest end it's three steps up in the shimano group set and then this awesome dnp nickel coated freewheel 11 to 34 tooth that's great so many times these freewheels, they're only like 14 to 28 tooth, which means you have a harder time getting started or climbing, and you can't really maintain those high speeds without spinning really quickly. So this is really a great part. Again, a value part, but one of the best out there. I'm gonna start off in the highest level of assist, just so you can hear that motor. Uh, but then I'm gonna take it down to level two, because it's, it's really subtle, it's really amazing how quiet it is and I just love how quickly the system responds.
to me, level two and three, they're just perfect. You end up going around 10 miles per hour, but you hardly hear the motor at all. And it's just really subtle and smooth. It ramps up um, a lot a lot more smoothly than, than some of the other systems and maybe some of the older rad bikes where it was, it was just like off or on. Now it, yeah, it's just, it's nicer. I'm gonna use the throttle this time so you can hear that. And I'm gonna twist it all the way. So full power. And I love that you can override assist at any time with full power to help you climb or catch up with a friend or just to get out of a sticky situation. So here's the throttle. Very nice. You can actually see the light on the ground now. So it's got that like blade and it, it's not really dark enough to see how big it is, but it's clearly, it's a lot more focused than in the past. I wanted to do a little ride test. So I'm gonna hand you guys off to Eric and go for it. Climbs pretty well, like going up the up the rocks and stuff. It's still pretty zippy. It just ramps up really smoothly. Oh wow, that was cool. So the one of the neat things about electric bikes is that a lot of times you can see wildlife. Like we just saw that deer, because they're a lot quieter than gas-powered vehicles. like in level three in terms of pedal assist it's fairly powerful but uh, not quite as fast it doesn't feel as overwhelming well guys I think that's about it it's been a blast here at McKinney Falls really cool to get to see these bikes back to back and just take them off road and really test that for the full written review on the Rad Rover Step Through and all the other models, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Got a cool comparison tool so you can see the weights and the prices are really similar, but just get more details on these. I really go deeply. I measure these by hand. Want to help you guys as much as I can. Have fun out there. Ride safe. Love you. I'll see you next time.